Well, Sunday's Arc de Triomphe is the biggest race of the season so far, and who better to pick the bones out of it than the three men who write the form book, Mark Brown, Dave Orton and David Bellingham. And Mark, we've got to start with the favourite, Sarafina, unlucky third in the race last year and winner of her trial last time. Absolutely. I mean, uh, in my opinion, we should be talking about her as the winner of last year's race. Um, she endured a nightmare passage under Girard Marseille, nearly getting brought down, and it was a remarkable performance to finish where she did. Um, this entire season has been uh, geared towards the arc. She's enjoy, endured a, a, a perfect prep, um, often, especially a, a song clue victory two starts ago, almost as if she wasn't off at some point. Um, she was she was given plenty to do and yet still managed to pick up Cirrus de Zeglo, who's won three times since. Um, her foy win um, was the perfect prep, given, a, again, relatively easy time of it. Um, she has to be favourite. She's quite possibly the one to beat, but I'm finding it hard to look beyond the three-year-olds. Well, David, it looks like it could be fast ground on Sunday. Would that go against her? Well, she won on good ground earlier in her career. Uh, I'm not totally convinced about her stamina for one mile four. I know she was unlucky last year. There's no doubt in that, but I think this is a much better race. There's no doubt in that. I don't think between any of us is there that it's a better race this it's time around. It's definitely a better race than, than last year, yeah. So, she's got a few things against her, and uh, mostly uh, that four-year-old filly stat, which is not good. Is she Zarkava? No, she isn't. Is she Urban C, the last four-year-old filly to win? No, she isn't. Uh, so, at three to one, can I back her? No. Well, David, you're saying it's not as good a race as last year. She finished behind Workforce last year. So does that mean you think Workforce will come out on top again? Well, I know we have very different opinions on Workforce, which I'm sure we'll come to. Mm -hmm. As far as Serafina is concerned, she hasn't really proved that she's any better this year than she was last. I mean, the races she's won, she was entitled to win. I think this is going to be a totally different test to what she's been facing so far this year. And I've just got this horrible feeling that she may not be... Uh, her chance was last year, and I don't think she'll get the same opportunity this time. Well, Dave, Workforce seems to be a horse that massively splits opinion. Mm. Are you going to be with him to be the, uh, the first back-to-back -back winner since alleged? I can't understand why he's the price he is. He's been drifting all week. That makes sense to me. I know he's not the flashiest worker. They said that at Sandown recently. He's not the flashiest worker. There's also got to be a slight doubt about the match fitness of Ryan Moore, isn't absolutely, there? Absolutely, absolutely. He's well, He hasn't had a ride back yet, has he? So, as good as he is. Yeah. There's got to be a slight doubt about that in a race like this. Uh, last year, Workforce saw plenty go his way. He had soft ground. It's a completely different ground. He does go on decent ground, but... Can we get over the flop last time? I mean, it wasn't like he just completely bombed out like he did the previous season, Dave, was it? Uh, that's my point. He's actually ran better in this year's King George than he did last year. He's coming off the same absence. I could see him running a big race and perhaps getting into the frame. I'm not saying he'll win, but when you look back at the history of the arc, yes, great horses have won back-to-back -back arcs. But Alleged was beaten in the St. Ledger before he won his first arc. And Sagas was first past the post in two arcs. You wouldn't say he was an absolute superstar. I think people have been a little bit too quick to write him off. Um, I think he'll run better than a lot of people expect. I could see him sneaking into third or fourth. I just think when you look back at some some of the horses who have won the arc, some of the great horses in recent times, Monger, for example, is a personal favourite of mine. He's, he's certainly no Monger. Um, in the race last year, it's quite possible he was third or fourth best on the day. I think Swap the Jockeys and Nakiyama Festa would have beaten him. It was just Ryan Moore's strength that got him home. Both Beckerban and Serafina, as we touched on with Serafina, they both had claims to being unlucky. So for a horse who narrowly won the arc when he was quite possibly third or fourth best on the day, to come back and win it this year in a stronger race, I would genuinely be amazed if he wins it again. Well, what about, say, you think he's beaten Workforce pretty conclusively in the Eclipse? That was over a mile and a quarter, going up to a mile and a half. Do you see that being a problem? Yeah, now we're talking, and I think this is going to be, again, another difference of opinion. Absolutely. He's, in my idea, the most solid horse in the race. OK, he's an older horse, but um, I don't think we've really seen the true So You Think yet. I don't think people gave him nearly enough credit for what he did against Workforce at Sandown. Workforce came into the back of the Eclipse off, you know, nearly a career-best first run back on really bad ground. And, uh, I mean, he had the pacemaker, everything went his way. Yes, the trip maybe might not be Workforce's thing, but he quickened twice, so you think, and I, I think he's a superstar. You've got to look at last year's Melbourne Cup. That's the interesting run. That's his first run beyond one mile two. And uh, he very nearly pulled it off, and he pulled really hard in that race. Uh, so I don't think stamina's a problem. He's a high chaparral. You'd be amazed if he didn't get it. I think he's tough. The vibes from Valley, uh, from Valley Doyle are very strong. And uh, I think this could be their time to go and get that race again. What about the form of the yard? I mean, the two-year-olds have been doing very well at Ballydore, but the older horses not firing on all cylinders. Have they really got the strength and depth that they had in previous years of older horses? I don't think so. I mean, Await the Dawn, great horse, was sick after 
you know, that bad run at York. It's that York form again, isn't it, that we keep coming back to. Seville, again, he's been on the go quite a lot. Has, is he really putting it all in? I'm not too worried about that. I think they'll probably have handled So You Think slightly differently. They've almost come to this by default now. He's just coming into it at the right time. I think he's got his ground. I think he'll nearly be favourite on the day. You say how he's come into it almost by default. Would that be a concern for you, David? He might not have been aimed at the race all season. Well, that was my concern originally, but then I was shot down by being reminded that he uh, has been Australian trained where they run almost twice a week. So <laughs> maybe I was wrong on that. I don't particularly like So You Think. Um, I don't think he's really the superstar that he, he was uh, meant to be. I've also got a problem about a horse winning, winning the Arc de Triomphe on their first attempt at a mile and a half. I know he ran very well in the Melbourne Cup. That's his only outing so far beyond a mile or two. Until he shows me he can actually win a top-class race at a mile and a half, I'm prepared to oppose him. Well, all the horses we've discussed so far have been older horses, but it's picked up in the paper. Three-year-olds win it. Three-year-olds win the race. So who are we going for from yeah. the three-year-old camp? Well, yeah, I think it's been 15 in the last 20 have gone the way of the three-year-olds um, with the with the weight allowance. Um, it's um, Again, like this year I'm finding it hard to look beyond them. I've been a massive fan of Gallicova all season and I'm certainly not going to be deserting her now. Um, I think she's been, she was a Mayfowl and I think she's been brought along steadily. Um, and despite what some people think, I believe she's had, connections have had this race in mind all season for her. Um, she's very strong at the end of her races. Um, we were actually talking the other day about um, gr possible ground concerns with yeah, the faster ground, but I've, I've had a bit of a U-turn on that. Um, mm. Initially in her races, when she's been asked to quicken, she's taken a while to pick up. Um, and But I'm, I'm thinking maybe on better ground. Maybe it's just been the fact she hasn't been able to quicken immediately it's out the of a soft as surface. Well, isn't it? it's, the it's the breeding. It's breeding as well. She's a half-sister to Golda Cover, who's loves it on a faster surface, uh, daughter of Galileo. So I'm thinking perhaps, uh, interesting enough, earlier in the spring when she twice won impressively, she showed a turn of foot on each occasion and that was spring ground in France. And she's been struggling to pick up out of the softer stuff of late. And I think on this ground, I, I, I think we could see a much improved display and I, I'm almost expecting her to win. The worry for me is if they don't lay her handy, I think she could be in problems. She's not a filly that's got an instant turn of foot for me. If you watch how she won last time in her prep, she grinds it out. She was well on top at the line. Is that the ground though, like we were just saying? Very possible. possibly. It may well be. It could just be her run style. It's going to be fascinating to see. And uh, I can see why she was backed at big prices. And still at eight to one, she looks like just about the top three year old for me, I think. And what about the Colts? We've got the likes of Reliable Man, Meandra. Can you see them sort of getting involved? I certainly can. Uh, just one other point about Gallicova. I've got a problem with three-year-old fillies. They used to be dominant in this race in the 70s and early 80s. Zarkava, obviously three years ago, but she was an outstanding, exceptional filly. Apart from that, you have to go back to 1982 to find the last three-year-old filly, Akaida. Uh, we found last year with Sarafina that three-year-old fillies in a rough race, they're the first to suffer. As far as the Colts are concerned, I'm sure everyone knows the Niel, usually the key trial. Uh, eight Niel winners have won the arc in the last 20 years. So that's where I'll be looking for the winner. Uh, Reliable Man and Meandra are obviously the first two there. Big chance. Um, there is a possible problem with the ground with Reliable Man. Yeah. Meandra may have been sick when he was second in the Niel, but Andre Farr, master trainer, if he thinks that Meandra still has a virus, if there was one in the first place, he wouldn't be running him in this. Uh, I, I expect him to reverse the form. I mean, I like So You Think, and yeah. I don't think... Snow Fairy appeals as a likely classy winner of this. However, I've been waiting for her to get over one mile four again. I have. I think she's an older filly this year. You look at the way she travelled behind midday in the Nassau. She just flattened out there and she went really close against So You Think. I didn't think it was just a one-horse race that day. I, a lot of people have gone against So You Think on that, but I think Snow Fairy's an absolute machine. She showed that, didn't she, in the Far East last year. She's had her problems this year. She's probably coming right. I think the Breeders' Cup is definitely the race for her. But... She's been back to big prices, though. That's the problem, That's the isn't, thing, it? isn't it? The opera was hers for the taking. They may still switch there. It's unlikely. Yeah. Um, I mean, the ground's coming in favour. On a, on a soft ground arc, you'd have, she probably wouldn't have run in the race. The draw as well. We haven't mentioned the draw. The, draws, mention the, the draw is going to be huge, as it often is, getting an early position. If, Single if figures is huge. If you're stuck too wide, then you're going to be... You don't want to be drawn on the outside. You're fighting, the battle, sure. fighting the battle from the off. Yeah. Yeah. I think she'll run a big race if she does go for that. I still think the opera's hers for the taking. It's a Tory rise, isn't he? I think. Yes, he's he's on first call. Yeah, absolutely. I think she she'll run a big race. I think she's been well handled this year. I th she didn't make a reappearance. I think until the Eclipse. That's right. That's she's improved in each run since. You know, this is going to be her time of year, as it was last year when she won those big prizes in Japan and Hong Kong. Uh, I'd be quite afraid of her if she goes for the Arc, but I just hope she goes for the Opera. 
Well, Japanese horses have been carrying all before them in international races this year. Nakayama Festa came close to winning the arc 12 months ago. We've got Hirono do Amor and Nakayama Festa in the race this year. Uh, what, are, what are your views on them? Yeah, they're, they're interesting, especially with the grounds having come now. I'm more interested in uh, Hirono do Amor, who he won a big, big two-mile race at Kyoto back in May, I think it was. Um, and coming into the, the, the four, I was questioning whether he'd have the necessary pace. But I'm reliably informed that a two-mile race in, in Japan is more like a, a middle-distance race over here. And he showed in going down narrowly that he has got the necessary speed. Um, he's, I think he's around the 20, 25 to 1 mark. And with, with the trainer having stated before, Andy expects him to come on markedly for the run. I think he's got to have definite frame claims with, with Nakayama Festa having shown last year that they can go very close to winning the race. Yeah, they do run well, don't they, they when do. they come over from the far east, we've, yeah. we've seen that. Yeah, I mean, Nakayama Festa, if he hadn't had the injury in the Japan Cup and came here after yeah. a fairly uh, regular campaign, I'd, I'd be interested in him, but obviously he's had his problems. He, he was making his reappearance when last in the, in the foy. Uh, the other horse, one thing we know about the Japanese horses is that the fast ground is not going to be a problem for them at all. Good point. So I can see them running well, but I'm not quite sure they'll, they'll be good enough. Again, as I said earlier, it's, for me, swapped the jockeys last year and he probably won the race, but we're going to have that problem again this time round and it's a stronger race. So I'm, I'm more interested in Haruno because he's he's a little bit less exposed. We, we don't know quite how good he is. Okay, so Haruno done more possibly at a big price for Mark. Any other sort of big priced horses well, you fancy? It's a dream, isn't it? I yeah, mean, you've been covering these foreign spotlights for the post all year, so this yeah. is really your bag, I think. Yeah, she um, uh, earlier in the year she she was beaten in the Italian Oaks, so on that, you know, it was a, a, a very weak race by the grades usually, you'd give her no chance, but she's been a, a massive improver in, in recent weeks, and a recent uh, demolition job of a, a, a decent yeah. field in Germany, but in yeah. Night Magic, who's a, a, is a solid Group One performer out there, it was so impressive. And being a three-year-old filly, she's getting plenty of weight. Um, she handles testing conditions uh, very well, but I think she's won twice on good ground. Um, again, she needs to be supplemented, but she's certainly interesting. If, if, if connections decide to, I think it should be should be known. Can you see her winning though? Probably not, to be honest, but. It wouldn't She's be. that sort of sexy foreign sort of horse, isn't she? No, quite unexposed, exactly. no one knows about exactly. it. Exactly, I think probably half of the appeal with her is she's, just, she's unknown. We're not sure how good she is, but... And the German, Germans have won the arc in 1975 yeah. with Star Appeal. Yeah. I think if she turns up for the Breeders' Cup Philly Mare turf, she would be very interesting. Yeah. Uh, if she's supplemented, yes, I think she'll run well, but I, I'd be looking for her in America. OK, so just to sum up then, selections? Uh, very strong on Gallicova um, and uh, Hiruno de Moa and... Sarafina probably for frame claims. Okay, one, two, three from Mark for you, Dave. Yeah, I'm going to go for the old horse. I think so. You think is rock solid each way. I think it'll be favourite. I think Galakova will be thereabouts, and uh, I think Meandra as well. I think he's overpriced. And David, we'll leave the last word to you. I think Meandra, uh, as long as he's fit and well, I think we'll take all the beating if he turns up. Reliable man to make it another strong renewal of the Neil form, and good old workforce to run into into the frame in third.